imagine now that I have a, a cylinder, right? So I draw my cylinder. So of course you draw along with me, right? And you can stop the video whenever you want, catch up, start it again. Right? Elliptical shape in here, right? I'm gonna have my little cylinder here, right? And um, to understand this method of structure drawing, I had to understand how to analyze the structure, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a cross contour line, right? So we go back to this structural drawing, right? Cross contour. So the cross contour line, imagine a topograph topographic map, right? Topographic map with kind of gives you uh, lines, lines of the, they kind of slice the mountain at a certain level and tell you from this height, this line here correspond to the height of, I don't know, you know, uh, 1200 feet or something like that. A little bit lower in, you know, uh, 1100, et cetera, et cetera. So when I do the same on the cylinder, we're gonna slice the cylinder like a, like a salami, right? A salami, different slices here. And these slices are gonna give me the line of contour of the form. And this line goes across the form. That's what that's why it's called cross contour, right? So I keep cutting, I keep cutting. It's like a CAT scan, um, but you don't see the slice in here, you'll see the line of section of the CAT scan, right? So you imagine now you have all these lines that cut through the form and they visualize the outlet contour, right? The, the, how the cylinder is curving, right? Because the cylinder could be maybe there's a dent in here, right? There's a dent in here, and then the cylinder will do this, right? Dent, oops, dent, right? And here now the dent is a little bit smaller, right? And then disappears, right? Or in here now, same thing, right? A little bit smaller and then and then disappear. So there's a dent in here in my cylinder, right? So, but this is the cross contour line, right? So now this cross contour line is kind of um, good for telling me of the, 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 the volume, the volumetric characteristic of the subject, but artistically speaking is kind of dry, right? So what I want to do, I want to find a way to render my cylinder in a more interesting way, right? So I'm gonna redraw the cylinder, right? So you notice that for drawing this cylinder, I use the pencil in a different way. I hold the pencil in a different way, right? We can start about, about mark making also. So if I draw like this, I have a high precision, right? Because I really can control uh, the um, the line. I want to tell the line to do exactly, the line does exactly what I want it to do, right? But um, when, I, when I want to render uh, many lines like this, so this way I have a high control over short lines, right? And I put them exactly what I wanted. But if I want to create an area of value that is flat, doing this could be, um, has two disadvantages. One is that when I do this, I put all the weight uh, of my hand on the pencil and the hand can be pretty heavy, right? And uh, at the same time, because the pencil, see how it's angled, right? Only the little tippy tip touches the paper. So I'm gonna have very thin lines. Sometimes I want to have very thin line when I do detail, but if I want to cover big areas of value, right? I want to do this, meaning I just, when I do this, I just put the weight of the pencil on the paper and I just, you know, to hold it like this without uh, pushing down, right? I don't need to push it. And then now I can create very, very faint, very, very faint um, areas of value. And this is going to be the mark that we're gonna use later on for the um, tonal rendering. But 
I can use this only also, sorry, for mark making, line making for the structural drawing. Meaning if I do this, right, when I draw, when I draw like this, right, I don't use this joint, this joint. When I use this joint, what happens is the line is very short, right? It's precise, but it's short. And making a long straight line is difficult. Instead, if I use like that, if I do this, I use the shoulder joint and the shoulder joint helps me in making straighter uh, and longer line. Make sense? So I want to do a, a, a long a straight line like this. It's going to be harder. It's going to be hard. It's going to be, I can do it, but it's going to be a little bit wobblier, right? Uh, well, it came out pretty good, but it, this is much straighter, right? So um, now I draw this with with the, um, I draw the side of the cylinder, unlike what I did for this cylinder here. And you see the difference. The lines in here are much sharper. They are straight too. I mean, you know, been drawing for all my life. So, but it's easier if you do, if you do this, right? And uh, in this case in here, the line is softer, is straighter, but it's kind of, uh, fuzzier, right? So what 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 this uh, what I could do now at this point? Once I blocked in these, uh, in 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 terms of just uh, visualizing my cylinder, if I want to have more precise mark, I go over it just gently with a kneaded eraser, right? And then I can redraw my cylinder, right? My cylinder with a with a simple line, more precise line. And I use the underlying um, trace as guide, right? You guide my hand, right? So different way of, of different ways of drawing, different way of mark, of mark making, right? Okay, so now what happened is, as I said, we have this cross contour drawing here, which is uh, um, interesting, but it's kind of dull. When I want to draw rendering, <coughs> want to render something more, uh, artistically, then what I do is is this. I create a number of lines in here that give me the sense of turning, but I don't need to draw uh, the whole the whole thing because I'm thinking maybe so this area here is going to be a little bit it's turning away from me. So the curvature in here is going to kind of really curve at the last moment at the margin in here as I come toward the peak of the cylinder, maybe here it's going to be a little bit, little bit lighter, right? A little bit lighter, right? And then I decide here, I leave it white because maybe the light comes from here and there is no uh, lines in there, I leave it white. So, but then I pick it up here again, right? So if I do this, see that I achieve a sense of turning of the form, but it's not as rigid as this, right? And uh, because I also imply a little bit of the to of the tonal, the value, how dark and how light it is by making it dark lines, thinner lines, no lines, and starting the lines again. If I want to push more, even this more, this sense of turning, then I can increase the number of lines in here like this, right? Make sense? So now, at the same time, what I've done, that I describe the turn of the form, I also achieve one, two, three, four values. See that value? Because this is darker, medium, light, brightest, and then back again. And I can keep going. I can keep going if you really want to push this idea of the tonal development like this more and more, right? Make sense? So, uh, now I feel the form turning. So now, one thing is very important. When you draw these lines in here, right? So see, see, with this line, I just started from the margin, go all across, and then, and then get all the way to the other side. But um, in here, I want to think the same way, but draw differently. So if I cut my section in here, right? I start with the line here, right? And then what I do, I could maybe make it gradually get thinner. See that? So thick here, right? And thinner. And from here, jump, and I let it go. And then 
leave this white area here and then I go continue from here. The important thing is that when I do this, right, when I do this, when I leave the white in here, there is continuity between this line and this line in here. Because that way, even if I don't have anything here, my brain tells me, hey, look, you know, this goes from here to here. I lose it, but I see it again here. So I, my brain connects the dots, right? Connects the dots. I can do this too, right? Here a little bit. And then here, I don't need to, to draw a lot, but they, you have to have continuity between these two lines in here. So when you start a line here, then you have to make sense that, make sure that this line in here is, is connected with the other one. If in my cylinder, when I draw this line, I don't consider the, 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 the section line and I start doing this, right? Then my brain says, what is that? Hair, grass, what is that? I don't understand, my brain does not compute, does not um, understand that there's a continuity between these margins here and this margin here because there is no such a thing. So then I lose the sense of um, of, of form, the description of the form. Keep in mind one thing though, that um, I can use these lines, not as structural line, but as tonal line. And I'm gonna show you how to do it quickly, right? So this exercise should give you enough um, stuff to do for quite some time, right? So now, if I can, I use this line here, I can do that, right? I can do this, right? But now what I'm doing, I'm not trying to replicate the structure. I'm trying to replicate the values, meaning I could put this margin here, now more packed together here, like this, right? It could be lines, it could be dots, it could be whatever you want. And as I do this, um, I'm gonna have more margin here, making it darker and darker and darker, like that, right? And then here, maybe fewer, right? Maybe fewer, and none here, and more here, right? Here. But, um, makes sense. So I can still achieve a sense of, uh, uh, of volume, right? With, let's call them hairy marks, right? I'm just making it up, right? Uh, you could use stippling, like little dots, right? But it takes forever, right? The thing is this, that, the structural approach is really important in uh, because it makes you understand the volume, the volumetric aspect of your subject. So practicing drawing with this, it gives you um, uh, a good, uh, it teaches you how to handle uh, the mark, the line, how to educate your hand to do what you want the hand to do and appreciate the volumetric characteristics of the form. So it's really, it's a method of analysis of the form, right, of the, of the subject. So now, structural drawing, right? So um, let's look now at uh, tonal drawing, right? <laughs>